Tonight, Linda Hurtado is taking you inside communist Cuba, a place most Americans still cannot visit. She was able to secure a journalist visa from the Cuban government, and here are some of her observations on what has changed in the last decade. Back in 1998, I stood right here in the Plaza of the Revolution with dozens of Tampa residents and quite literally thousands of Cubans watching as Pope John Paul II took the stage with Fidel Castro. Back now in 2011, I wondered what had changed. Certainly the parking lot is now empty. A new Castro is in charge. And Cubans seem more willing to talk to an American journalist. Fernando Baral invited us into the kitchen of his Havana home, which is also his private business a restaurant called the Cactus of Street 33. He's very open when discussing how doing business is slowly changing in Cuba. Now, they gave the possibility of having the license to sell, to sell food and beverages. Fernando says he pays the state monthly and gives them a percentage of his profit at the end of the year. Still, he says, his private business has been profitable. But now it's a little bit short, so and so. Because there are many restaurants, so a lot of competition, and there are less tourists. <laughs> With 20 clients a day, the, the business goes on. Then in a week, we can calculate something like $10 per person, something like that. It would be 1400 cooks. Once he's deducted expenses, he says he would have made about 500 convertible pesos, which is a little bit more than $400. But that was a good week, and he says he hasn't had one of those in a while. The Cuban government reportedly licensed nearly 200 types of these private sector activities, where Cubans can earn money without working for the state. They can also hire employees now. Fernando has two. Another change. They have provided uh, Im important and very good uh, programs and possibilities for Cuban people to, to go and spend uh, uh, days at the hotels uh, with privileged prices. He says the state also lowered the prices of cell phones, and I saw many more of those in the hands of what appeared to be locals on the busy streets away from the tourist hotels. What hasn't changed? The large amount of food, clothing, and medications brought into Cuba by relatives living in America. On the ABC charter flight I traveled on from Tampa to Havana, the line was long with people and essentials. These simple goods appear to still be hard to get for most Cubans. Another change that may help with at least the issue of food, a new law that allows Cuban citizens to acquire land, not own it, but build and use it for their own livelihood, including growing food for the family. We tried to line up an official government interview to confirm this, but weren't able to secure one on this trip. I know I will not please everyone with my reports on Cuba. The division of opinion on this country is still so strong. So all I can do is report on what I see and what I hear while I'm here and try to give you some insight into what it's like in communist Cuba. Reporting from Havana, Linda Hurtado, ABC Action News. And Linda will show you what it took to report inside Cuba and get her stories out. You can follow her reports and see more pictures she's posting daily by going to Facebook, Look for Linda Hurtado's WFTS page and leave her a comment. Tell her what you'd like to see.